the information here again. It's just just generic for your uh, and for the folks in the room. Some of them have uh, attended some initial public hearings that we've taken the liberty of doing ourselves, and then in the same footprint that the city's notice. We have 4,000 stores in the United States, about 1.4 million employees, and what that translates to in Michigan is 90 stores, 90 Walmart stores, 26 Sam's Clubs, and we do have one distribution center here in the state of Michigan, um, all told that's a little bit over 32,000 employees right here in the state of Michigan uh, that Walmart and Sam's Club directly employ. Um, and that includes our folks at the uh, distribution center. Um, those 90 stores and 26 Sam's Clubs do just about $4 billion of uh, annual with Michigan suppliers. So those are everybody from the, the large suppliers like Kellogg's uh, all the way down to small suppliers that um, I did a little math question on our informational data system. I think there are seven suppliers right here in the city of Southfield that are part of that $4.3 billion economic impact that we have here in the state of Michigan. Um, the slide here gives you just kind of the general overview of what we're proposing for the Super Center. Um, the proposed site uh, will be seating about 130,000 square foot facility is our proposal. Again, you're covering everything, the entire complement from grocery to all of the general merchandising. Um, some of the pricing information, what we do, um, and we can go to the next slide. Um, jobs and direct benefit here for the store. Uh, a typical super center for Walmart is about 180,000 square feet. So as you'll see, and Robert will go through, we're about 50,000 square feet total, smaller than you would find in a normal 184 that we would, we would uh, typically pursue. A normal 184 is about 300 jobs. You see, this translates down for this specific proposal to in the 240, 270 employee range for this store. <coughs> Taxes, um, again, this is a rough estimate that what we're based on the property itself and the way it's currently zoned and what it generates as a church property. It's about $350,000 roughly of total <coughs> property tax revenue that would be generated, and as you know, it's about a third of that uh, roughly that would be for the city's general fund, and of course what the elected officials in the city chose to do with that revenue is up to the you know elected officials and their constituents, of course. Um, try to help to reinvigorate the corridor, uh, it's a, as you all are very well aware, the property is sat vacant for quite some time now. Um, and then this is more, again, just kind of a generic, um, what does it mean when Walmart comes to town? Uh, what does Walmart do? Some of the, uh, the numbers at the top, 2011, $21.7 million in grants, donations, in kind, and direct cash for uh, Michigan-based charities. Some of the local organizations that were approved in our spring uh, State Giving Council program included the Hazel Park Promise Zone, Get Ezra, Food Bank Council, Miracle League, and I can tell you that um, we're doing our State Giving Council fall program <coughs> fall. The council actually meets tomorrow, much like you. We do it over the phone, though, because we have associates and folks like myself kind of scattered around. Each of the states has their own State Giving Council. Uh, I have both Michigan and Ohio in my territory, so I sit on the State Giving Council in Michigan, and then I also sit on the State Giving Council in Ohio. Um, both will, within a ballpark, the second half of the cycle, will probably award $800,000 worth of grants to Michigan-based foundations and charitable organizations. Tomorrow during our call, things will be finalized. And <coughs> just about the uh, the end of the month, first part of December, you'll start to hear what some of these organizations would be here in the state of Michigan. Uh, kind of touched on the supplier numbers already, um, and then we'll get into some of the more specifics. But these are some of the items that we know have, have kind of been brought up. Um, again, it's in the public hearings that we held at the church, talked to the residents in the area. Uh, some of the concerns 
that they brought to our attention. We know traffic is, is an issue, one of probably the primary concern for most residents that we've spoken to today. We know that to, there's challenges at that corridor existing. Um, there are some long-term plans that the Road Commission has, and we're trying to take some of that in, and again, Robert will get into some more of those specifics. Uh, but other things like the new bus, um, bus stops, if we're, we're going to do that, will we work with SMART or with the municipality to do new pads? And so we've taken a lot, a, a lot of good notes from those, uh, those meetings. We think we've got some really good input, some real positive feedback from constituents of here in uh, both not just Southfield, but of course the Lakewood folks that are just across the street. And we're trying to do our best to incorporate a, a good number of those very positive suggestions into what we're proposing this evening. So um, I will certainly be here to answer any specific uh, company questions that you all may have. I'm happy to take some now. And unless you see otherwise, I'll just turn it over to Robert when you're right. Okay. <coughs> okay. I'm Good evening, Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. State your name. Yes, my name is Robert Matko. Again, I work for CESO and I'm out of the Lansing, Michigan area. Um, happy to be before you this evening uh, presenting the site. And I also see many uh, familiar faces in the audience that I recognize from, from some of our meetings. So some of this may be a repeat of some of the meetings that, uh, that you, you all attended, but uh, and then we'll be answer any questions that the Planning Commission may have after my presentation. Uh, if, and I know Jeff, uh, I'm not sure where Jeff is at, but uh, is it acceptable if we also go through the rezoning as part of our presentation? I, I would appear in facial I would recommend, uh, although Terry's going to talk about the rezoning. Um, we do have virtually two projects in one year with also funeral home as well, but um, you feel free to if you're okay with him talking about Yeah, I'd rather have you do the overview. Yes. Then we'll get into the specifics. Great. Just wanted to make sure. So, uh, so when I talk about rezoning and then we go into site plan, that, uh, that there are two separations there. But uh, what we did is uh, we, we put together a few, a few PowerPoint slides here that hopefully uh, let the Planning Commission and members of the audience understand with uh, what we're proposing here. But uh, the site the existing site right in this area is primarily uh, zoned uh, three, three separate uh, zoning classifications with the church parcel in yellow being uh, the single family R2 and then we have a small uh, office designation and then we also have a uh, B2 planned business area to the north of the site and again north is pointed straight up. Now, uh, all of that encompasses approximately 10 acres, uh, but predominantly we're going to be rezoning the entire 10 acre uh, portion to uh, B3, which would permit the, uh, the Walmart development. In addition to that, uh, the other component of the rezoning request is some of the funeral home, and they will actually be expanding the parking lot and will be requesting a uh, vehicular parking zoning for that area. Uh, but again, this is what the existing zoning is currently classified as, and this area of the funeral home is currently zoned uh, single family as well. Our proposed zoning that we're showing again, uh, we're looking at uh, rezoning this to a B3, and again, we're looking at uh, rezoning some of this area to the back of the funeral home as a, uh, a vehicular parking zoning classification. And again, that would support uh, the Walmart development, in addition, uh, it would support additional parking for the funeral home. And uh, we'll discuss uh, some of the parking when we get into the site plan and um, also get into the rezoning, uh, or I'm sorry, the Walmart development a little further as well. This, uh, this slide here actually shows many different pictures around the existing site, which obviously is comprised of um, the existing St. Bede's Church, and then also to the north, and north is actually facing to the right on this slide, uh, but it also uh, encompasses a small portion of the existing strip center right in this area. It will also be demolished to accommodate the Walmart development. Uh, again, uh, this strip portion
division to the north will actually remain and is not part of the development. And again, you can see many of the different pictures uh, of the su current site condition. Uh, essentially, again, it's a, uh, a, a church that uh, uh, is really uh, no longer in service. And again, the parking lot is uh, somewhat deteriorating. Uh, the rear of the church uh, does have some employees now that uh, I think there's approximately 20 to 30 employees to the rear of the existing church and uh, they have some uh, some different functions that go on there. This, uh, this slide here just shows again the blue portions are what uh, would be demolished as part of this project. The red buildings, uh, the strip center to the north, again north is to the right, are the uh, structures that would, or buildings that would remain. So again, you can see the blue right in here is a portion of the existing St. Bede's Church. They would be removed. Again, you have a little portion to the rear here as well. And this is the existing strip center um, to the north that would be removed. And I believe now there's an Einstein bagel in there. And there's also, uh, I believe, a few other smaller um, entities. And then there's also a few vacant um, areas in that building as well. You can see here to the west, uh, this is the existing uh, uh, Southfield Funeral Home. And again, this is the uh, Kesh Street. And this is the area here that we're talking about rezoning and uh, adding additional parking for the church. And again, just to orient everyone again, uh, this is 12 Mile Road right here, and this is Southfield Road, and again with North Paint pointing to the right. Um, oh, man, for you, Sam. Also, I'd like to point out that uh, this slide also shows that we will be uh, closing uh, five existing curb cuts as part of the Walmart project. Uh, there are actually three curb cuts along Southfield Road that will be closed as part of this development. Uh, and when I say closed, they will be removed entirely. And then we also have two curb cuts along 12 Mile Road that will be uh, closed and, and removed permanently as well. This uh, slide here just kind of gives a uh, two-mile radius of just some of the uh, grocery stores in the area. Uh, the Walmart development, as Eric has indicated, it, it will be a super center, which will include both a grocery and a uh, general merchandise or retail component. The, uh, as Eric had indicated, this store is a 130,124 square foot super center, approximately. Um, uh, 30-some thousand of that square footage is going to be dedicated to uh, the grocery component. And what, what Walmart is doing for this development is they're essentially putting a uh, 150,000 square foot, uh, the grocery component that is in that store, they are going to be uh, putting that grocery component in this smaller 130,000 square foot store. So if any of you have been to the new Novi, uh, Walmart in the Novi Town Center. <coughs> the grocery that's in that, which that one's a 156,000 square foot store, that size grocery is what you're going to see in uh, in this super center here, which again is a is a smaller super center, 130,124 square feet. So this again just shows some of the grocery in the area, um, and again uh, the Walmart is is at the 12 mile and Southfield Road intersection. You can see here in the two mile radius, uh, there are a couple right on the edge, and uh, there's a, a, a few smaller uh, groceries uh, in, in the area there. The site plan, uh, just to orient you again, north is facing to the right. This is 12 Mile Road, and <coughs> this is Southfield Road. So again, north is to the right. Uh, this up here is the Southfield Funeral Home, and you can see the blue parking, the blue that shows up there, that is the proposed parking for not only the Walmart development, but also the Southfield Funeral Home, the additional parking that will be added. So you can see the Southfield Funeral Home, we're going to be adding approximately uh, 90 parking spaces to uh, that uh, funeral home, which will uh, tremendously help during some of their peaks uh, when they have uh, some of their funerals. Uh, you know, we've heard that there, there could be some parking either back um, on Guy Street, um, obviously along Kess Street, uh, so that, that will definitely help. There will also be cross access with the Walmart development. The Walmart uh, itself uh, is a, a pr 
providing a so over 650 parking, approximately 650 parking spaces for the site. And what we're looking at here is uh, we're approximately uh, under under seven percent from the city's ratio for what they require. Uh, city parking ratio is, I believe, one per uh, 6.66 square feet. I believe that shows up on the next slide. Yeah, as you can see, I uh, proposed the Walmart is 623. Uh, there are approximately 24 uh, spaces for car crowds that are not included in that number. The funeral home currently has 64 parking spaces. Proposed will take it to 152 parking spaces. The uh, strip center has 176 existing and proposed would be 146. Now that 146, there was a parking waiver that was granted uh, years ago. Obviously that parking waiver is not included in our number, but that waiver was for 91 parking spaces. Um, and that was that allowed the shopping center to be short 91 spaces. So that, that parking waiver is no longer included, but I just wanted to make note um, that that waiver was granted a, a while ago. Um, again, the proposed overall parking, as you can see, we're actually within 74 parking spaces of the overall required parking that the city would require. Um, the Again, the city, or I'm sorry, Walmart actually requires uh, approximately uh, one per 250 square feet of usable floor area. Uh, that works out to about four parking spaces per thousand square feet. And uh, what we're what we're looking at here is the city's ratio is much, obviously, much larger. Um, you know, Walmart that parking for Walmart is is what they what they require. Obviously, the city's requirement is a little bit higher, but adding all of the different parkings, and we are going to have cross access not only with the funeral home, the funeral home will have cross access with Walmart, but there will be cross access with the shopping centers as well. So, again, all of this parking together added up, we're uh, just 74 parking spaces um, short of what the, what the city requires. <coughs> Yeah, going back to this site plan again, you can see this is the strip center to the north that will remain, um, and it is in a different parking uh, color. This just gives a, a, a kind of a blow up view of the uh, Southwood Funeral Home. Again, you can see the uh, proposed parking along the bottom of the screen and all of this additional area here of parking that will be added. There is an existing single family <laughs> home. In this area, it is abandoned. It would be demolished also as part of the funeral home parking expansion. This slide here just shows some of the landscaping that uh, Walmart is proposing for this site. Uh, in, in essence, uh, required for this site is uh, approximately 15,000. Uh, 75 square feet, where uh, Walmart is actually going to be providing over 22,000 square feet of green space. So there's a lot of green space that's being added for this project. A lot of that green space is also included along <coughs> 12 Mile Road. And what is going to be proposed there is an 8 foot berm with 8 foot tall evergreens staggered on top of that berm, along with a retaining wall along the back side. And that will create <coughs> essentially a 16 foot uh, kind of a visual barrier from the 12 mile road uh, roadway. In addition, we are showing a, uh, a feature here right at the corner <coughs> of 12 mile South Hill Road. We'll get uh, a little further in the PowerPoint a perspective on what that will look like. You can see here again we have many numerous uh, internal landscaped islands where uh, plantings trees will be installed as well as trees along the west property line Again, north is to the right. You can see this large green area here was not included in our green space calculations, but that is an area that will be dedicated to the Road Commission uh, for Oakland County, <coughs> and that is for future roadway improvements uh, that may occur or will eventually occur on Southfield Road, whether that's a boulevard uh, or whether it's additional <coughs> lanage. Uh, the Road Commission is currently studying that through an environment, environmental impact study to determine what is going to be best <coughs> for Southfield Road in that area. And that leads us into our traffic summary, which is a uh, key component of this site. The traffic, um, 
we conducted a traffic impact study for this site. Uh, we met with the city. <coughs> we ultimately submitted our traffic study to the Road Commission for Oakland County. They reviewed the study. Uh, the city also reviewed the study. The Road Commission for Oakland County supported the findings of the study. Um, they, they agree with the findings. They agree with many of our proposed recommendations. And uh, again, I'll kind of walk through just briefly some of the uh, components of the traffic impact study. I've already discussed about the uh, site access and how five existing curb cuts will be closed. As part of this uh, Walmart development, what we did is we tried to come up with the best traffic plan for this site because we're obviously at a busy intersection of Southfield and 12 Mile Road. So what we try to do is design our site driveways to be as far away from that intersection as possible. And that is why one of our site driveways is actually an existing signal at Edwards Avenue. In addition, on 12 Mile Road, we spaced that driveway as far west as we could. As a matter of fact, we're actually somewhat off or, or straddling Walmart's property line with that driveway. And we are sharing that driveway approach with the funeral home. So we're taking away one of the funeral home's driveway, driveways and we're actually combining a Walmart driveway with the funeral home driveway. And that access, uh, we can get to it here shortly, but it'll actually uh, be a right in, right out, left in. So the left out would be prohibited there on 12 Mile Road. So that would direct vehicles up to the existing traffic signal at Edwards Avenue. Again, so what we're dealing with, we tried to come up with the best possible access for this for this, uh, for this site. And again, trying to keep the access driveways as far away from 12 Mile and Southfield Road intersection as possible. Again, manual turning movement counts were counted. We looked at approximately six or seven different intersections, including the main intersection, which everyone I'm sure is, is concerned about is 12 Mile and Southfield Road. And you can see here, uh, this just goes through some of the conclusions of the traffic impact study. The uh, Again, it, we just are looking at some of the trips that the uh, proposed Walmart generates. Uh, in the uh, AM peak hour, we're looking at uh, 93 inbound and 72 outbound. Uh, in the midday, we're looking at 232 inbound and uh, 232 outbound. And during the PM peak hour, we're looking at 223 inbound and 233 outbound. Now, the bottom line here is actually pass by trips. And passed by trips for this development, and I've, I've mentioned this in some of the residential meetings, is uh, being looked at at a 24% ratio. What that means is approximately 24% of the traffic on 12 Mile or Southfield Road is not a primary trip. In other words, it's not destined for Walmart. You might be driving by and just decide all of a sudden, you pass Walmart and you decide, well, I'm going to pull in, I might pick up something. It's not a destination trip. And as much as 24% of these volumes you can see here 52, 146, and 144 trips can be uh, counted as pass-by trips or not necessarily new trips for this development. Uh, we're looking here at the Walmart generated traffic at the intersection of 12 Mile and Southfield Road during the, the worst time period, which would be the PM peak hour, would actually contribute less than a 5% increase in traffic to that intersection. Currently, there's approximately 48,000 vehicles traveling on Southfield Road and about uh, close to 18 to 20,000 on 12 Mile Road. Uh, the Walmart development would generate less than a 5% increase to that intersection. Now, many of you might say, well, that's, that's still too much, but when we get into some of the improvements we're making, we can show that we, we do mitigate some of Walmart's impact and we, in essence, and the Road Commission believes this as well, we can actually improve the operation of that intersection. And that leads us again to our traffic recommendations. Um, and, and we state here that, again, regardless of the Walmart development, uh, these improvements are needed right now, today. Uh, many of you would agree with that. At that intersection, um, you can see that uh, there are some movements that back up, specifically the west leg of the intersection. Uh, can back up during a 4 to 6 p.m. peak hour. Um, also, you get some sporadic, maybe queue pro queuing problems during the afternoon and possibly morning time periods as well. Uh, what we're looking at here, 12 Mile Road, is again, we're moving two existing full access driveways on 12 Mile Road. We talked about that earlier. Uh, 12 Mile uh, Road and Walmart Driveway, we're looking at uh, constructing a right in, right out, left in driveway. So that left out again would be prohibited. Uh, we're constructing.
constructing a 400 foot westbound and northbound right turn lane on 12 mile road. Uh, that will get some of the vehicles that are traveling west off of the road into the right turn lane and allow some of the through volumes to, uh, to, to move more fluently. We're going to be, again, combining the Southfield Funeral Home and the Walmart driveway. Again, trying to limit the curb cuts um, on 12 mile road. Southfield Road, we're going to be removing three existing full access driveway uh, curb cuts on Southfield Road. We're going to be dedicating, this is 42, it's either 42 to 62 feet, but it's in that range of uh, property to, um, to the county for future, or for right of way and for future roadway improvements. Uh, Southfield and 12 Mile Road, we're actually going to be replacing the existing traffic signal at that intersection. If you drive at that intersection right now, you have a simple span or a diagonal span traffic signal. Um, even discussing with the road commission, it is a, it's an old signal. It is in need of modernization. Uh, basically, right now, uh, Walmart would be looking at modernizing that signal as part of this development. And we're looking at whether it's a box span signal or a mast arm traffic signal. And I believe we're, we're looking at a mast arm signal. What that will do is it will space your signal heads more appropriately around the intersection. In addition to modern, uh, modernizing the signal, a new controller cabinet would be installed, new video detection, because this is a SCATS system. That's what the Road Commission uh, considers the video cameras that uh, look down and detect the vehicles. So again, with the modernization of this um, traffic signal, it will improve not only visibility of the signal heads, but it will improve, it will be, uh, I, I heard an example of, it's almost like going from <coughs> maybe an old flip phone to a smartphone. It's just going to be much quicker operation. Um, you're looking at state-of-the-art controllers. Uh, again, really centering the signal heads around the intersection. In addition to that, we're going to be adding right turn overlaps to the intersection. Um, those right turn overlaps will allow your right turn lanes to, in all directions, to move whenever your left turn phase is moving. That will also help the intersection. At Southfield and Edwards Avenue, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to replace the existing signal there. It is, again, a diagonal or simple fan signal, which means you have two poles. We're going to make that a four-pole signal, just like at 12 Mile and Southfield Road. Again, that's going to space the signal heads out a little further. Um, we're going to modernize the intersection, all new video detection. Um, it basically is going to be a state-of-the-art intersection. Uh, we're also going to be uh, constructing a three-lane driveway uh, that would service both the Walmart and remaining shopping center. Uh, that three-lane driveway would allow vehicles to queue when entering the Walmart development. And what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Christopher Shears and he can walk you through just some of the uh, building elevations for the development. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Brochiers. I'm with CISO. Uh, I believe we kind of talked a little bit about elevations last time. And for this store, we wanted to do something uh, upgraded from what the normal Walmart does around the country at different sites. Uh, we understand this site is unique uh, due to the, the surrounding areas and the closest to the roads. And so Walmart has uh, upgraded the building elevations uh, around the sides that uh, are going to be visible from different roadways to help enhance that whole area uh, from kind of the rundown look mm. of, of what's going on over there. Mm. Uh, along the front elevation, uh, here at the top, they've added windows to kind of uh, give it a more pedestrian look. Uh, that's an upgrade that, that Walmart doesn't typically do. Uh, they're using materials that are uh, low maintenance. Uh, not painted materials, so it'll the look of the store will uh, stay that way better than having to constantly paint and fading paint and all that kind of stuff. Um, along the uh, Southfield Road elevation here at the bottom, uh, we added uh, different elements to kind of break up the, the roof line so it wasn't just a long, long wall. Uh, we also added windows and awnings, uh, and then those are all. Uh, as you've seen from the, the site point a little bit, have the trees and everything also along Southfield Road, so it kind of has a nice backdrop to that for the parts that you can see through the trees uh, and provides a nice elevation on that side with varying materials and uh, uh, step out. Along the rear, the um, majority of this area actually will not be visible from 12 Mile Road due to the berm and the trees, uh, but 
they've continued the same design elements along the rear of uh, changing materials, uh, different elements to break up the, up the facade, and uh, the roof line there. Um, the side facing the funeral home uh, has a garden center uh, that will have an ornamental fence instead of, instead of uh, a typical chain link. They'll have an ornamental iron fence as an upgraded look uh, to provide a, a nice aesthetic on that side uh, that faces the funeral home. This kind of gives you an idea of the normal footprint or what this footprint is. This green area here is the grocery part of the store. Um, as we alluded to, it's a, it's a larger grocery area. Uh, Walmart felt that this, this market uh, had a need for a, for a bigger grocery area than, than a typical store this size. And so we've actually taken some of this general merchandise area and devoted it to do grocery uh, for the store. Um, this area here is the general merchandise. Uh, this is the garden center I talked about a little bit earlier uh, that will have the, the fence around it. Um, and then the, the service areas here in the back that face that firm. Uh, and also there's a wall along here along the truck wall to help uh, block that and also to pull some of the sound and anything else uh, kind of in those service areas uh, along a 12 mile road. These just kind of give you an idea of some of the signage. I know we'll have further discussions about it. Uh, but the one thing I wanted to point out is Along 12 Mile in this area, we heard from some of the residents that they were concerned about having a, a 20 foot tall sign there. Uh, and so we, we, we've changed uh, the design of that sign back here in the back. So now it's a low monument sign. So there's not that concern of being visible from the neighborhood for that signage. It would be something low. I think it's about 8 feet tall, maybe 10 foot, but it won't be uh, you know, the 20 foot tall <laughs> sign that is a typical uh, for a Walmart store. There will also be another sign over here on Southfield, or uh, Road is the main, main entrance. Just kind of give you an idea of, of the better, uh, closer look to, to the different elements that, that uh, have been designed for the store. Uh, there's been additional glass added in this area uh, to provide some, some architectural detail and some nice uh, finish in that area. Uh, there's awnings in this area. And then if you look over here where these trees are, we've actually created a little seating area um, with some benches and some landscaping. Due to the site and the sidewalk movement, um, it didn't make sense to have a, a seating area really in the uh, at the entrance just because of all the traffic going across or people coming and going. So we've moved it over here so it's more open. People can be further back away from traffic and all those movements of, of uh, uh, cars along the front drive. <coughs> this is a view from Southfield Road if you're heading south. Um, you can kind of see there's uh, a wrought iron fence, a short wrought iron fence with uh, uh, columns of uh, brick that uh, help uh, accent, provide a barrier and uh, complement the building nicely along with the uh, uh, trees that provide kind of a nice streetscape along that side that, that currently is uh, not there. If you get down to the corner here at 12 Mile Southfield, uh, we change to an evergreen uh, as we get towards the back to provide a, a screening of the back uh, service areas, uh, really trying to, to minimize that, any impact that area will have. And then here at the corner, we are uh, installing a seating area uh, with uh, plantings and uh, uh, carrying the fence and uh, brick elements there at the corner, create a nice little element there uh, that the public can. Uh, uh, use. This one's just another view of the, the front of the store, and then this is just a little bit better view of that back of the store where we're planting all the evergreens. You can see all the evergreens over here are the ones on top of that farm uh, that will provide a lot of screening for the back of that store. Uh, once you get uh, further north of this, we'll change to the, uh, the more ornamental trees, but in this area along Southfield Road, we're going to have the evergreens too to help screen that area. Um, that's just a little bit closer uh, view of that corner. And this is, there'll be a wall constructed uh, along the neighborhood side. There's currently a wall there that has kind of been disrepaired. Uh, that will be uh, uh, demolished and a new, new wall put in there to provide uh, uh, a barrier between the commercial property and the, 
the existing residential uh, areas. <coughs> that's kind of what <coughs> our plan is, I guess, for the site. We're, uh, we're open for questions. We also have other people on the team here that are a little bit more specialized in certain areas. Can you uh, touch on your water detention plan a little bit? Robert? Water detention? Yes. I could, but he knows that. <laughs> yes, the, uh, the underground or detention for this, uh, the stormwater for this site will actually be an underground detention system, so everything would be stored underground. Uh, it's obviously a very expensive system, uh, but that would be designed not only to the city standards, but to uh, the county standards as well. So again, it all will be underground. Okay. I understand too that uh, a couple of the businesses uh, off of Southfield, we've done a demolition at uh, you're going to save them, like Dunkin' Donuts, I believe, and... That is correct, yes. With another <coughs> restaurant also? Um, currently, there, there's, as, as Robert mentioned, the Einstein Bagel Shop, there's a, a house to watch stands and a salon in the, in the south end of that existing development. Th those stores would be, would go as the building goes, and they'll be talking with their current landowner on how, where they relocate and how they relocate. The Dunkin' Donuts on the, uh, the bottom right-hand side of this on the far north would stay. And then I believe the restaurant that you're referring to is currently vacant in the, in the far west or the back end of the existing property. And again, that, that's not our property. That's not our development. So there have been some rumors about who might be coming to town as a result of Walmart coming to town. And we certainly would be happy to see a, a fine dining establishment go back into that, but that'll be a decision that the existing property owner will make with the tenants that apply for his property. Yes, Commissioner Colton. To the chair. The uh, homes in the rear that you said that you're going to tear down, those homes, quote unquote, are vacant? There's, um, two if I may, uh, to your question, the, the home for the demolition, if there is an existing home on Test Street that is vacant, uh, that's the only home there. The up there were, I guess, uh, previously there were two other two homes there, and I believe that the funeral home has already demolished those. So those are green. That is currently green space, I guess you would call it. There's just that one third and final home on Test Street that would that would come down. Okay, and it is vacant. Yes. And if the pros go through, you would take that over and demolish it. Yeah, we would take that over yeah, and vacate was, the road. And yeah, then my concern was that you know, when we talk about demolishing homes, that I just wanted to be concerned that the home was vacant or the occupant of the home have been contacted. Okay. okay. It's owned by the, I believe. It's owned by the funeral home? You own that, that, that existing home. Okay, that has been vacant for over a year. Okay, and you own it? I do own it. Okay. I own it right now. Okay, and we'll be quick. I understand you for the funeral home. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes. uh, unless there's like clarification questions, I'm going to ask if the commission will allow us to make our presentation first, and then, then we'll get into specifics on site plan issues, and I want to cover the rezoning. But if, yes, if there's any other clarification questions. Okay. Mr. Bale, I appreciate the, uh, the verbal information on the uh, traffic study and but when can we get a copy of the traffic study and the uh, CIS community impact study? I'll make sure that I get your copy of that. I'll get your copy of that. It'll be in your packet on Friday. Could I stop by and get it earlier? I'd like you to can get it earlier, yes, sir. Wish your people? Um, I may have missed this, but where the funeral home is and the house is going to be demolished, there's like three lots there. Correct. There's a house. Um, north of that. I don't remember what is the buffer. Is that going to be in the brick wall? Or um, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm that'll be a brick wall. And the north going to be property. Uh, currently, I, I don't, is there even a, is there a fence behind that existing home that you own and the next property owner? I believe home? there is. It's just a change just of stuff? Yeah, change of What we had talked about, and again, taking some of the feedback from the residents, would as Robert described, currently there's an existing wall that runs directly north. It's a, a white brick, rather dilapidated wall. So we would demolish that wall and then bring it down and make that 90 degree turn to take it straight west. To again, buffer the north end of the funeral home's parking lot <coughs> from that neighbor that would be immediately to the north, that first home on Guy Street. And the rear of the homes that I'm looking at, about seven of them, you have a wall there. That you're going to be putting a new one up? Correct. There's a, there's a six foot high white brick wall that's there currently. Um, that wall would be removed, and then the new wall that was showed um, would be would would go back in to, to replace it. It's, it's in pretty bad. The existing wall is in pretty bad shape. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> okay, Jerry. Okay.
had an overview, we've got to kind of take a step back. And we're going to we're going to deal with specifically Walmart's request for a zoning amendment. And um, I'm going to ask if, if you guys can leave this, this drawing up there. Um, and, and when we consider the rezoning request um, from R1 single family, as indicated in yellow, OS office service, which is indicated in blue, and the planned business district, which is indicated in red, um, totaling about 11.95 acres. We have to consider all of the possible uses of the requested zoning district on B3. So we almost have to set aside that Walmart's coming. We have to make our decision independent of Walmart. We have to look at, does the rezoning to B3, is it consistent with our master plan? And are all of the potential uses that are permitted in the B3 district make sense for the, um, for the good of the city? So I'm going to be taking us through about a dozen questions that we like to look at when we're considering rezoning. <coughs> and after we get through this application and Jeff talks about the proposed site plan, then we'll revisit the funeral homes rezoning and, and treat that separately. But we're only going to focus right now on the 11.95 acres um, that is being requested to go to B3. The first and one of the most important tests as planners, as planning commission, and as the city, is, is the request of zoning consistent with the goals, policies, and the future land use map of the comprehensive master plan. And as many of you know, the city adopted a comprehensive master plan on April 13, 2009. Typically every five years <coughs> we get reviewed, but we're currently in, the, in this five-year period where the master plan is valid. And the future land use map designates the corridor of Southfield, the north-south road sub-area. So in the master plan, they've already designated this as a sub-area corridor study. And that, that sub-area has a unique area that contains a mixture of multicultural retail and services. And the comprehensive master plan designates the subject site in that master plan as potential large-scale and mixed-use development. So, back in 2009, they looked at the existing residential and said, long-term, we see this corridor as being mixed-use, and we see this specific site as potentially, um, the market um, might suggest potential large-scale and mixed-use retail. And uh, we know that the site was um, primarily developed for St. Dee's Church, which is now vacant and underutilized. And one of the objectives of the sub-area of the master plan is to encourage the acquisition, demolition, and reuse of those properties that, by virtue of their location, condition, or value, no longer function at their highest economic potential. Specifically, the master plan states that the St. Beats Church and Southfield Plaza Retail Center are two large sites that could be redeveloped in the future because of their size and location on the corridor these sites have the ability to be redeveloped as a mixed-use center if desired by the city. So the first test is, is the rezoning from R1, OS, and B2 to B3 consistent with the master plan's goals, policies, and future land use map. And based on those statements, um, I would say yes. It is consistent. Uh, that doesn't mean that Walmart should be developed there, but it does suggest the mixed-use commercial for the site. <coughs> Another thing we look at is compatibility of site issues. Are the sites physical, geological, hydrological, and other environmental features compatible with the host of uses permitted on the proposed zoning district? Well, this is an urban site that's been developed, and there are no existing environmental features remaining on the site. So any new development would be consistent. Third test is compatible compatibility of uses, all of the potential uses. <coughs> so I'm going to take a minute and read all of the potential uses in the proposed B3 district. Medical offices, including clinics and medical laboratories, banks and similar financial institutions, 
post offices, private clubs or lodges, nursing schools, nursery schools, photographic and interior decorating studios, photographic reproduction, blueprinting and print shops, funeral homes, establishments that perform <coughs> personal services on premises, stores of a generally recognized retail nature, veterinary clinics and hospitals, publicly owned buildings and utilities, establishments of professional or similar trades, assembly halls and similar places of assembly, open air retail sales of plant materials and sales of lawn furniture, playground equipment and garden supplies, hotels, restaurants including bar, lounge and carry out, and accessory buildings and uses customarily incidental to any of the above permitted uses. So when we're considering making a recommendation on the B3, we have to consider all the potential uses. Uh, we also look at land suitability, and the B3 district is designed to provide sites for diversified business types and is often located so as to serve passerby traffic. This district will generally be used adjacent to high volume major thoroughfares of which Southfield is classified. Density of use, the density of use will be dictated by meeting the dimensional and parking requirements of the district. Uh, we already talked about environmental impacts. Detention will be required for a 100 year storm event and the planning department would recommend low impact design measures to be incorporated in any site development in the future. Nature of use is the proposed uses compatible with all the surrounding uses in the Southfield Road corridor. Traffic impact, and this is an important issue. And what we would typically do if we didn't know what the development was, we kind of look at some worst case scenarios. But I think specifically since we do have a traffic impact study, and we're looking at a big box redevelopment, uh, of about 130,000 square feet, which is probably about the maximum that the site could handle. I think that the traffic impact study that was completed in September 2012 is more than adequate for rezoning for us to make the decision Does can the site handle all the potential uses. And I think Rob had indicated that um, there are a number of recommendations that would be considered as part of the site plan. Many of these will improve the situation. We've had these, um, this traffic impact study reviewed and verified by the Road Commission of Oakland County and the city's traffic engineer, and they conclude, they conclude, um, they concur with the conclusions of the traffic study. So we know that the traffic study is valid, and they conclude, or they concur with the recommendations for improving the situation of traffic should this development go forward. And we have some other specific recommendations that we'll deal with during site plan review. Aesthetics, basically, uh, again, if we're looking at any type of development, we would require that uh, the buildings be compatible with surrounding uses and that quality building materials, architectural elements, landscaping, pedestrian amenities would be required. The infrastructure, currently there's a 16-inch water main on the north half of 12 Mile and a 12-inch water main available on the west side of Southfield Road. There's existing 12-inch sanitary sewers and 18-inch county Oakland County <coughs> sanitary sewer on the north side. Storm wa water management, Oakland County Water Resource Commissioner has a 72-inch Snyder drain on the north side of 12 Mile. <coughs> so the infrastructure is already in place to handle any of the proposed uses on the site. So there doesn't have to be significant upgrades in any of the infrastructure. Maintenance of property, we think that the property, the property currently is undervalued based on its vacant use and prior use and its existing conditions and any new development would help um, increase property values in the area. We look at reasonable return, has the applicant demonstrated that he or she cannot receive a reasonable return on investment. Uh, well, the majority of the site is currently zoned single-family residential, and we know that since 2008, the residential market has plummeted. There's been about a 40 to 50 percent <coughs> increase in property values. We have not seen a single new residential development in my tenure here, and that we don't think that residential in the, the short or near-term future is a viable economic um, option for the site. Office. We also know that we have a glut of office in the city. With with we're coming back, but 
significant amount of uh, vacancies in office, and depending on the quality and the age of the office, um, that dictates whether there's a value to the office site. And then plan business um, district, it's, it's a viable option, but given Southfield's roads instructed to handle up to 90,000 cars a day, probably the highest and best use for the site is B3. We talked about the capacity of the infrastructure. We also look at whether or not public schools would be affected. They won't based on the types of uses that would be developed. We already talked about um, detention would be done underground and that the existing utilities are, are, um, act, um, are sufficient to handle any capacity. We look at whether or not a community impact statement is required um, because the combined parcels were greater than 10 acres, a community, community impact statement was provided with the application and has been reviewed and it is consistent with, with our, um, our ordinances. Uh, is the zoning map amendment necessary to avoid exclusion of a lawful land use? In this particular case, it's not applicable. Is the rezoning establishing a desirable zoning trend or policy for similar or identical lands along Southfield Road and 12 Mile Corridors? We believe that um, if this were to go forward, then a desirable zoning trend of redevelopment along Southfield Road Corridor between 12 and 13 Mile is likely. And one recommendation of the North Southfield Road Corridor sub-area is to expand the economic base of the corridor by retaining existing jobs while creating new diverse employment opportunities, improvements that advance traffic safety and efficiency, pedestrian access, and enhance the character of the area will help accomplish this task. And we believe that we can meet all of those goals in this development as we move forward. Are the boundaries reasonable with the requested zoning? Yes, the boundaries are consistent, which, would, which um, the area that has been identified as potential large-scale retail and mixed-use development within the north south Field Road corridor sub-area. Is this an appropriate district? Yes, we believe that the general business district is designed to provide sites for diversified business <coughs> and it's often located so as to serve passerby traffic. This district will generally be used adjacent to high volume major thoroughfares such as Southfield Road, which is designated as a principal arterial designed for 20 to 90, 93,000 average vehicles per day. And I think Robert had indicated it's currently at about 48,000. Mm -hmm. And it has problems, but that's why the Road <coughs> Commission is looking at making long-term improvements to the road. And these intersection upgrades will help with some of the traffic situations. Does the request of zoning district avoid creating an isolated on-plan spot zone? And we can say yes because it's not an isolated district and it's, it's greater than an acre. And has this uh, request been previously submitted within the past year? So we can say no, the zoning amendment request has been submitted. No, no, no zoning amendment request has been submitted in quite some time in this area. So this is a fluid process. This is ongoing. These are our draft preliminary comments on the rezoning and we should uh, be making recommendations based on all the potential uses, not on the proposed Walmart itself. Um, but um, since these applications have come in concurrent with each other, then uh, it is appropriate for, <coughs> for Mr. Spence to talk about site plan issues. But if, if the Commission has any specific questions at this time on the zoning analysis on the amendment, I'd be happy to answer them. If I could, to the Chair, uh, in mentioning the various types of uses that could go into a B3 zoning, why, why aren't you also uh, considering what could go under B3 with special use? This is this is done all over the city. Th th those those also are have to be considered, but the special use requires additional public hearing and additional <coughs> conditions. So the first task <coughs> that we look at is principal permitted uses. And we I understand that, but should they not also be listed so they're under consideration or we they know to be as under consideration? As, as I said, this is, this is a fluid review and I will add those on for next week's uh, discussion. Uh, if I could continue uh, under the track.
traffic uh, study, traffic impacts, uh, it notes that there's, uh, or I'd like to note that the, the left end uh, on 12 Mile Road uh, into the proposed site during peak hours and possibly others also will be very hazardous in trying to make that left turn. Uh, if I had a if I had a site plan here that I could point to, I could point out my reasons for it. It's very awkward trying to uh, trying to conduct this like this. But, but uh, if when you're traveling east on 12 Mile Road uh, with the intention of turning uh, north on Southfield Road, and traffic is backed up past the funeral home, and then you get to turn in, get ready to turn in to the proposed Walmart location. And traffic is still coming from from the east to the west, and you're sitting there blocking the turn lane so nobody else can get in, can uh, turn at the light. Uh, I'd just like to point that out. That this is not uh, an every now and then occasion. This is a constant occasion uh, during noon, uh, the noon hour. Uh, true enough, it's pointed out uh, the three hours that are the peak. But those peak hours uh, are it's very close to peak at, at about three or four additional hours during the day. And uh, for someone like myself that lives in the area that has to travel that area a lot, I'm very familiar with it and uh, too familiar with it. And, uh, and, and that being the case, I'd just like to point out that, that that it needs to be considered how dangerous that's going to be to try to make a left turn into that uh, 12 mile entrance. Through the chair, um, I'm going to ask Robert to uh, sure. respond to that. Yes. Thank you. And I, and I know you've been at some of the, or one or two of the residential meetings, I three. believe. Yeah, three. <laughs> uh, you know, from, from the right in, right out, left in driveway, from this Turn section. Turn that light off. From this section down. Walmart will be contributing zero volumes to that intersection, uh, which we feel is, is very important. Uh, so again, from, from, the, from the west, uh, from this point down, uh, Walmart again will be contributing zero traffic to that leg of the intersection. And as you stated, that intersection, we, we've noticed it, it does queue up some. Now again, I, I believe your experiences have been as it exists today. And, and, I, and I really do believe some of the improvements we are doing to that intersection, uh, the new signal, the right turn overlaps, the westbound right turn lane that we're going to be adding <coughs> in here, uh, that those will have an impact on what you're seeing right now. Um, if, if that left turn is not permitted here, then this left here, all this left turn would then go to the intersection and have to turn and come all the way back up here and into, the, into Edwards Avenue. So, you know, we looked at it and, again, tried to come up with the best possible traffic situation, driveways, and that was just prohibited the, prohibiting the left and out of here because we know that, that there are some queuing problems here. But, again, based on your experience, and we agree, there are some problems there now, but what we're looking at doing is, is obviously trying to mitigate any impacts that Walmart has. And but the first and foremost would be, again, to add no traffic from here to this intersection. For that left turn movement. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I don't agree with your explanation, no, but the problem not. still exists. That's and right. it will continue to exist, is what I'm yeah. getting at. That's all I'm trying to point out. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm just saying that, that what we're doing what we're doing is we're not we're not adding any left turn traffic to the Southfield and Florida. I don't care who adds the traffic. No. I don't care where the traffic comes from. If okay. it's there, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Not only that, we live off of the side. Can, can I speak? Well, you have to be okay. recognized by the uh, chair first. Chair? If I could continue. Okay, first. he's not finished yet. Okay. So it's definitely not meeting. Great. Uh, the, uh, uh, in another paragraph, you're, you're uh, talking about the uh, eastbound, the eastbound to northbound left turn lane, which is the area I was just talking about, on 12 miles going east to turn north on uh, South Hill Road. During certain times, during certain time frames, experience is delayed reaching uh, uh, level of service F condition. And I'd like to also suggest, or not just suggest, but state a fact that uh, going southbound on Southfield Road 
with the intent to turn eastbound on 12 Mile Road. That turn lane backs up past Edwards on a regular basis in the afternoon. And so it's already at an F. If, if I may, Chairman. Okay, go ahead. We're actually going to be adding, that's one of the reasons we're adding right turn overlaps. Is that will clear this that? This is a left turn, and I'm talking. Well, I thought about you said from southbound to to um, to westbound, but you were saying southbound to eastbound. That's right. Yeah, and again, uh, what we're doing is is again adding those right turn overlaps too will help clear some of the intersection. But again, installing a new traffic signal there um, is going to help this situation. It, it is. It's 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 going to improve uh, what we're doing there. And 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 I don't disagree. There are, there are certain times during <coughs> during the day. Um, I think I said that in my earlier presentation, that there are certain periods where, you know, the intersection does queue up during certain hours, Then those might be three or four hours out of the day. But if you go by that intersection at, uh, say, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, you know, you can clear, you know, uh, I wouldn't say this very easily, but you can clear the intersection. Um, you know, there are certain hours of the day between 4 and 5.30 um, where there are some issues. Obviously, that is not necessarily the peak of the Walmart development. But I certainly understand your concern. And Mr. Chairman, if I get to that point, um, <coughs> if, if this board decides to rezone this property B3, and and our plan doesn't move forward, the next applicant is going to come in here with the existing curb cuts that Robert's already described, and I'm assuming make all those statements that you just had far worse than what we've at least proposed here, because. You have existing turn turn points into that property all along 12 Mile and all along Southfield Road. By moving these back to the very end, as far as away from the intersection as we get, we feel we're offering the city a plan to help address that concern for an existing situation that whether we come or anybody else develops the property, somebody's going to have to address. Well, if I could, uh, through the chair, the existing situation is not causing a problem. It doesn't have any traffic. Well, I, and, and, so and, and, if, so and if that I'm property not, stays vacant, you won't have a problem. If I could. What's being proposed is what I'm trying to address, not what, is, not what may be when something else comes forward in the future. If something comes forward in the future, I'll address that. And, and Mr. Chairman, I can, I can say to, to the Commissioner's point, if that stays vacant, the I problem still exists. Stay vacant. Through the chair, uh, Terry, I think that um, you made some very valid points as far as looking to this particular rezoning to the B3 as being consistent with master plan and moving forward. And I think um, I think it's Eric, Eric yes, just sir. made a good point as well, which is something that I was thinking about, which is if in fact Walmart does not is not the the retail store that's put there, the options that exist when we turn this into B3 are pretty much endless at this point. So we're going to be running into some of the same issues that we're running into now with respect to traffic and these other other um, issues. However, I am in agreement with the rezoning. I think if this is already rezoned B, or zone B1 and B2 and OS, why not turn it into B3? It seems like it makes more sense than leaving it as is, which could potentially continue to be vacant and continue to be an eyesore to me personally at this point. So I, I'm totally in you know, in support of rezoning it to be three to allow for any future land use, even if Walmart is not that actually stored at base there. Through the chair, I, I just, and some of you were on the commission when the master plan was last updated. So you did look into the future, and you did see that this site remaining as residential isn't viable for long-term development, and you did anticipate that this quarter would be redeveloped and you just it did anticipate these types of uses. Now again, I'm not saying this is um, this, this doesn't guarantee that Walmart would go in here or up, up or something that size, but all of the potential uses that are listed in the B3 are consistent with what the Planning Commission at the time and the City Council had termed as re reasonable redevelopment of this site. You gotta go. And we have an opportunity, um, whether it's this development possibly other developments to actually improve situations with the uh, traffic signalization, the upgrades with the, with the turning lanes, um, the dedicated right-of-way, 
the reduction of driveways from five to three, um, the signal timing, and and some aesthetic improvements to really improve that that the aesthetics and, and the function of that <coughs> corridor. Mr. Colton, to the chair. I uh, <coughs> I guess uh, this commission is only a recommending board, but I do see that we did have some. Uh, I guess they will try to see in the future. Because back in 2009, as Terry stated, this was and is consistent to be a mixed area. I think we're going to have a problem at that corner with traffic, whatever. You got, we got a problem now, and there's nothing on that corner. And we are losing tax money because there is, quote, nothing there. Whether Walmart gets the uh, approval to go through or not, something is going to be put there. I personally would not like to see a club put there. I would not like to see a lodge put there, but something is going there to, to generate some money. I think and hope that if Walmart does not get this, I just hope the next people that come through are going to be as good as partners as I think Walmart is trying to be. With redoing those two stop lights at Edmond and at uh, 12 Mile with the four prongs to give some, and let me repeat, some traffic let up will help. But regardless of what goes there, we're going to have the problem with traffic. And especially those people that live there and travel, as I travel through that area also, with, um, as Roy said. But we're going to have a problem there. And hopefully we can get someone that's going to procure that property to be a good partner with the city and the residents to want to do something <coughs> to try to alleviate that traffic. But it's going to be a traffic problem. And when we when we get the traffic set, when we can look at it more in depth from paper, I I, I just think this we, we need to do it, and I'm in favor of, of redoing it. Uh, you have to vote again. To the chair, can I have the floor? Mr. Bell, I would I would just like to point out. I'm trying to address this memorandum on the rezoning standards. I'm not trying to oppose the site at the moment. <coughs> uh, all I'm trying to do is address these issues that, that Mr. Crow brought up. And uh, and, I, and I'd like to, I hadn't heard from Mr. Crow, am I addressing them as, as you asked for? Uh, no, I, this, is, this is a good discussion. Okay, well, uh, it's, I seem to be taken as though I'm saying this about uh, as being opposed to this site or this proposal. Uh, I'm just pointing out some things that are currently existing there that nothing I've heard is going to improve that, and it needs to be in this memorandum to the council. Well, I just need to yeah. Okay, I, I just want to state too. I kind of helped out with the master plan also for the city, and this was part of the vision. Uh, for the rezoning, the traffic situation is bad there, but it's old is outdated. It needs to be updated. Uh, bringing in this project or another project, hopefully that should make the traffic better because everything will be updated. New traffic lights, new turn lanes. Uh, you know, at this point, it can't get any worse, but it should help. It should get better. But something that has to be done on that corner right now is atrocious. And it's actually bringing down property value. We want to increase property value. We want to increase, uh, you know, people traffic coming through Southfield, buying, shopping, you know, walking, riding bikes. That's what we're looking for. Uh, and I think this development, the rezoning, possibly could help bring that type of business into the city of Southfield. Any other statements, questions, Commissioner? I just want to say that, you know, when they were first talking about this, I have a friend that she doesn't live right up on it. She, not in favor of it. She thinks there's going to be a lot of traffic. I told her she should be here tonight. Something's going to go there. And I'll be honest with you. I want to hear what you guys have to say. But the way they were presenting it, it was though they've already talked to a lot of you that kind of resolve some of the issues. Nobody likes something coming, butting up to them in their neighborhood. No one wants to see it. But something's going to go there. And uh, I think that we as commissioners and 
you as the resident need to just think about what it is, state what you're feeling, get it out, so that you know you give us feedback. There's things that we don't think about. Um, you know, my idea about it, it's big. Um, it appears there's going to be a lot of traffic. I keep thinking about the different ones that I go <coughs> past, that I see. I don't usually have a problem with traffic. But we as commissioners need to drive around there. He lives near there. This is what we have to do for our homework. So I'm looking forward to when we open up and you can speak in the ones that want to uh, make your comments on what you feel. They want to understand, too, that this is not uh, actually as big as Home Depot. Is that correct? Actually, if I could through the chair. We did a, we did a little research um, prior prior to the meeting, and uh, the proposed Walmart, again, this is site plan, not zoning, but you asked the question. Uh, proposed Walmart is approximately 130,000 square feet. The existing target in the area is 52,000 square feet. The existing Home Depot is 129,950 square feet. So the Home Depot is, is what same size as what's proposed, and the existing Meyer is 195,000 square feet. So those three big boxes located immediately adjacent within that two-mile area, uh, two of them are either the same size or larger than what's being proposed. <coughs> Thanks. And yeah, we had the same concerns when Home Depot was coming, the Target was coming. <laughs> Everybody's worried about the traffic <laughs> and you know, not to go drive down the south field, but as you can see, it's no problem. Yeah. You, know, you can kind of adjust the traffic. Uh, if you live in that area, you kind of know to take other routes if you have to at certain times of the day, but you kind of adjust to it. Yeah. Are there any yeah, other questions from the commissioners? Yeah, I'm going to open up for one second to the public here. The young lady here has a question. Well, okay. You're considering different to the chair. Mm -hmm. okay. Chair. Put your, your name and address for the record, okay. please. Okay. Barbara Seiden. S E I D E N. I live at 18430 Winterset Drive. It's right behind Guy Street. I go in and out of Guy every day or the back way around Webster to park. Now, we've had more congestion on 12 Mile, and I wondered if you have considered the fact that semis will be traveling down 12 and Southfield Road to equip Walmart. They'll be going at all hours of the day and night because Walmart wants to make this a 24-hour mega mart. We will have lights, which you saw in the pictures, high up around Walmart, shining day and night, illuminating our neighborhoods, keeping us from sleeping at night. The noise, the traffic, we won't have a peaceful community there anymore. Plus, when they expanded Kroger's on Evergreen and 12 Mile Road, I just talked to someone today who lives behind Kroger's in the condominiums there. They had rats come into their, into their subdivision from the garbage that wasn't taken care of properly by Kroger's when they expanded that development. And we just had, have had a couple rats in our neighborhood. We called Southfield, and we asked them, what are you doing about this problem? They said, you have to take care of it yourself. You have to keep the lid on your trash cans. But what if it's coming from Home Depot, Target, and now Walmart? We have two mega superstores within two miles of us already. We don't need another one. We have two Kroger's, as they showed you up there. We don't need another one. Okay, okay thank you for your coming. I'm Harmon Gunther, I live on Green Spruce, 19101 Green Spruce. Uh, you you're having a no left turn out of the 12 mile entrance exit. And you, they are hoping that drivers would uh, go all the way down to Edwards. If you, you know, if you live on Rock Creek or Guy Street, mm -hmm. which are the next streets over, you're going to, you know, the rest of the development. Being, you know, human nature is going to try to get the shortest mm -hmm. distance mm -hmm. between two points. They are going to make a right-hand turn onto 12 Mile Road, cut down Guy Street, 
turn around in somebody's driveway and then go out and make a left. We have an island on Rock Creek where it's very simple to come in, make a right hand turn on the Rock Creek, go around the island and go out and make a left. That's almost an impossibility in today's world. N let alone the added uh, traffic that's going to be generated by the people coming out of Walmart just to make that left turn. Okay, thank you. Right here. Okay, go ahead. Just take your name and address for the record. Okay. okay.
some parts of it anyway. Uh, we've talked about it several times. That is a site where we wanted to do some kind of mixed use development. So you are absolutely correct when you're saying what you're saying on that. Um, and I would definitely let you know that I am in favor of rezoning that. I was at the time when we brought up the master plan, and I am now. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Spence. Okay, if I may, um, you know what, let's leave the lights off for a moment. Thank um, you. Can you bring up me in the, uh, please call this here on the you want to mention that one of the other components that's part of the proposal here, and I'm focusing on the uh, Southfield funeral home itself, um, there have been discussions right now with Cash Avenue. Um, Cash Avenue itself uh, does dead end right here at the property for the, uh, for the church. And part of the proposal for the Southfield funeral home uh, and what they hope to develop as a, a new parking lot there uh, would be to actually vacate this portion of Cash Road. Uh, as it was noted earlier, uh, Mr. Yoner does own the house that's here on this piece of property uh, and then also the property that is here farther to the east. Uh, so again, part of the proposal here, uh, part of what at least the Planning Commission will be discussing and eventually making a recommendation on is whether or not this portion of Cash Avenue should be closed off again for the potential for uh, the parking lot for uh, the Southfield Funeral Home itself. Um, and it's about a 60 foot right of way in there, it's about 189 feet across. Uh, the city would maintain uh, easements for the utilities that are there, there's some water, there's some storm sewer, uh, there's also a, a gas line that does run on the south side of the street. So again, that is going to be a component that the Planning Commission also needs to make a recommendation on. Uh, with regard to the funeral home itself, uh, again, the site plan north, uh, as it was noted earlier, does go to uh, the side here. Uh, existing funeral home with the blue parking spaces here right now, this is the building. The proposal, again, vacate Cash Avenue, uh, rezone not only that portion of Cash Avenue, but also rezone the portion that is currently RA, single family residential, for a new parking lot here. Uh, the requirements for parking for the funeral home are 47 parking spaces. Um, with the proposal here for the new parking lot, they actually be uh, adding additional parking, which will give us uh, 152 parking spaces on that site versus the 47 that they have right now. Um, we've heard from a number of people. Uh, one of the gentlemen actually who owns an office building directly to the west. Uh, with regard to the overflow parking uh, that occurs on the Southfield Funeral Home itself. Again, we're hoping that 152 additional parking spaces will help alleviate that. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier uh, by the people from Walmart, there will be some overflow with an access agreement on the Walmart site to also provide for additional parking spaces on their property should uh, the uh, funeral home actually go beyond the 152 that they have on their site. Uh, with regard to the Walmart, can you hold the Walmart? Um, really, uh, they did a really good job of explaining the site plan to you about what was going to be happening on that property. Uh, again, north is the side here. Uh, the building itself, 130,000 square foot building. Uh, parking requirements, uh, as they noted earlier, uh, parking for the property would be 183 spaces are required. Uh, they actually would show 623 spaces as part of their site plan. Now, this entire site is actually all meant to work together. Uh, again, with the loss of the, the removal of the south portion of the shopping center of South Hill Common, uh, there will be a main drive between the two that would serve all sites. And again, as it was noted earlier, with regard to the change of the driveway right up in here, taking out one driveway, making it a dual driveway with entrance, entrance to the funeral home here. They're all meant properties to work together. Uh, from a parking standpoint, uh, the total parking that's required uh, is 995 spaces. Uh, 920 921 spaces are shown uh, between the three properties themselves. Uh, there would be a waiver from the Zoning Board of Appeals that would be required for over 70 parking spaces for this property. Uh, it was mentioned landscaping. They are well over their landscaping requirements for the property. Uh, the, uh, with regard to the building height and their setbacks, they're meeting their setback requirements as well for the building. Uh, it does vary in size from about 26 feet in height up to 31 feet in height. Uh, overall, um, I think they did a pretty good job of explaining what the site plan uh, and the various
various aspects of that already to you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions or concerns?
There's a lot of fuck you guys say goes in one ear and out the other with me and said you can just stop long enough for me to get it. So if, if I may to this here, you're looking for a copy of that particular slide? Well, I'm looking for a summarization of what parking is currently there, what parking is, is required, and what parking is proposed. That is shown on your plan. Uh, it's indicated on plan on the bottom of one of your sheets there. C3.0. Uh, C3.0. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it, but I'm not an architect and I'm not used to reading plans. I need something simplistic that I can understand. Oh. We can make a copy of that slide available for you. Okay. Uh, is that it, Jeff? Okay, a quick one, I guess. Just a clarification. <coughs> it appears there's a, a trash compactor proposed for the site. I don't know where that's Yeah. Uh, could you just, I guess, reiterate the difference between some of these old, old grocery stores with open dumpsters and how inefficient they are? And the advantages of what I'm assuming would be a closed trash compactor? Yeah, the, 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 the compactor along the rear of the store is it's an enclosed compactor and the trash is actually not brought out of the building uh, to put in it. There's a chute from the inside of the building that the trash is put in which goes directly into the unit, which is a sealed unit that has a ram that actually compacts it all and it stays all enclosed. So there's no hauling out carts along uh, the back to throw in a dumpster and somebody doesn't Remember to close the lid or anything like that. That's okay. That's not what we do. Okay, good. Mr. I'm going to jump back right quick. Uh, could you also explain about the truck well? Because earlier one of the questions came up about the truck coming in and out, and I didn't hear anything about the lighting. But at the last meeting that I came to, you described about the wall being up and about the truck coming in, and you had the time that the trucks would come in and go down into a well. Could you let the, the people that wasn't yeah. at the meeting know about what you said about that truck well? I don't know if you have that, but at the yeah. one of the neighborhood meetings you brought that up. Okay. Uh, the truck well is actually in this area right here. Uh, this wall here is a 14 foot tall wall uh, that will screen uh, the area where the truck's actually back into the, to the loading area for the building. Uh, the truck well actually also sets down a couple feet uh, at the building. It, it slopes back up, but at the building it actually sets down a couple feet. Uh, so that will screen that truck when it is back there, uh, unloading and loading. And then also while we're here, the compactor also will have, even though it is fully enclosed, it will have a wall here, right here, that will also screen the view of that uh, equipment and help kind of deaden the sound of when it is actually compacting or anything. Through the chair. Uh, I just have a couple follow-up questions on that. Then. I've been involved with other big box retail where hours of delivery were limited. Um, there was requirements for no idling on site. So um, maybe you could address when when the truck deliveries are and then because of uh, the unique circumstances the commission could place some reasonable restrictions on delivery and pick up. We do that in other sites. Mr. Chairman, it's your pleasure. I'm happy to answer that. Um, I will say to, re to remind folks that, again, when the walls that were described to block the view of the truck well are also on the inside of the service road that goes around the back of the store, and then it's also screened by the hill and the, and the tree line that is also there. Sure. If you're along 12 mile road, it would be very difficult for you to even see one of the trucks that would be in our well. Um, typically, a store of this size, we'd be looking at two trucks a day. So, conversations that residents might be having about multiple <coughs> semis and I, I think they're considering with that this kind of a super center that would be acting more like a distribution center where we literally do have hundreds of trucks rolling through the course of the day out of our cold water distribution center. Uh, for this store on average you would get a merchandise truck and then you would get a grocery truck. Um, I say every day two trucks Typically what the delivery system is, is a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But again, it'll depend on the volume of the store. If the store is doing more grocery, you might get an additional grocery truck added through the course of the week. You might get one less merchandise truck. That'll be something that our store manager will do based on our customer demand and what our customers are looking for in our merchandise flow. But a store of this size, typical, we're talking about two trucks. Uh, one merchandise
merchandise truck, one grocery truck. Those trucks typically arrive at a store about the four o'clock hour in the afternoon, um, which means the trucks are there in the well by 3, 3.30. Um, the reason for that is our, our standard store operation would be when the <coughs> afternoon shift comes on, that's when the associates that work in the store are in the back unloading the physical truck and then the product that comes in to the, to the space then gets distributed back out onto the shelf and the merchandise through the course of the evening hour shift. The third shift is kind of restocking. Um, we work across, you know, We'll, we'll be working with our, our distribution center on truck delivery times, what works best for that store based on other stores in the area. It's certainly a conversation that we can have based on the appropriate times, but I also want people to re remember our trucks don't idle, and the reason they don't idle is because it costs us money. Everything we do at Walmart is designed to save money to drive price for our customers. So when a truck is in the well, it's not idling because that spends fuel. And the reason we do that is part of our sustainability program. And to date, we are now happy to say that we are driving 50 million fewer miles with our trucks and delivering 65 million more cases. And the reason we do that is because at the end of the day, it's good for our customer. Um, now, there are other delivery trucks that will service <laughs> the store. And those trucks come from all kinds of different suppliers, whether they be bread trucks, uh, the local beer and wine distributor, the Pepsi guy, the Coke gal, all of those things come, do come to the store. And those are things that the store manager will not only have to work with the distribution centers on, not our distribution, but our independent suppliers and their distribution, but they're also going to have to be conscious of the store. And the reason I say all that is because our drivers don't want to the traffic. So if traffic is horrible, which we all know it is, particularly with the peak rush hour in the evening time, we don't want our trucks on the street because then we're not, our associates in the store are waiting for the truck to get in the well and nothing works in a timely, efficient manner. So there are, there are a multitude of ways that we can address that issue to get, make sure the trucks are there in off-peak hours. Those are things that the store manager will work with us through public relations to handle what the city does. Yeah, thank you. Bill, the chair, you there? Yes, quick question. Uh, we had a concern about lights flashing, shining in homes all night. Why don't you address that real quick? Um, it, the short answer is they're directional. They go down. They don't illuminate the sky. But Robert, I don't know if you want to expand. Yeah, I'll just briefly. Uh, they will be shining zero foot candles over the property line. They're downward directing. There are LED lights. And again, we have zero foot candles per the city requirements spilling over the property line. Now, you know, if you look out your window, obviously you're going to see light. But if you're in your house, you're not going to have light spilling over from the Walmart into your house. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just had a couple follow-up questions. Okay. I was going to make the same point that we require all lighting to be shielded and directed downward and they have to need to air a foot candle at the property line. So we would be monitoring that. There was a question um, that I received and I think was also brought up earlier about security. Now, do you have your own security force? Do you hire independent security force? I know that our police department will be reviewing, our crime prevention will be reviewing the site and be working with, with the businesses, but um, this is a question that we've received several emails on. Maybe you could address that. Mr. Chairman, it's a pleasure. Uh, we do have asset protection associates that work in our source. Um, they're there for a number of reasons. From the, 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 they're the first responders, if you will, for something that's a, a slip and fall inside the store, things like theft that we see inside retail and across. Um, and then we have our own programs that we operate with our associates in the parking lot. That, but they're not deputized police officers for the municipality. <coughs> so um, I don't want to say that there aren't areas in the country with 4,000 stores that we don't have private security, it's, if we do, it's a very, very rare occurrence. Um, our response to concerns that residents have on crime is we ask the municipalities to work with their police chief and their current existing retail, and what we see is our retail, our impact on crime in the region is the exact same impact that any other major retailer is going to have in a community. Uh, and I, I I forget the term that you use, safety <coughs> associates or uh, asset protection. I'm sorry. I'm, um, the asset protection, do they, um, I know they're internal, but do, do they patrol?
control the exterior parking lots, or is there any? Uh, <coughs> just address that issue. It's it's it, it's honestly across the board. We have we have stores that have security systems in place, cameras. We have stores um, that the store managers work with existing uh, employees based on their shifts. That will that walk through. We have employees that walk through our parking lots constantly, both coming and going from their shifts, and also employees that are on shift that are out in the parking lot doing things from addressing trash concerns or litter in the parking lot to collecting cars and all that. So we, all of those things operate through, and the store managers are working with their assistant managers. And at the end of the day, if our customers aren't safe, they're not coming to our store. That is the primary concern for us is our customer and our associates. And if our customers don't feel safe, if our customers are stuck in traffic, if our associates don't feel safe, if our associates are stuck in traffic, we do not have a successful enterprise. Those are all things that our stores and the company take very seriously. And one last question through the chair. Um, this is proposed to be 24 hours. Yes. That's what they're proposing. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking at me, so I thought you were asking. Me. Um, what what is the determination between a 24-hour store and you do have some stores that are not 24 hours? If you can explain that for the commission, because that's a question that we've received a, a lot. Of that determination is um, our preference is 24 hours of the. 90 stores that we have in the state of Michigan. I believe there are 12 stores, maybe 14. I, I can't remember the number, but it's about a dozen stores that do not operate 24 hours. Our preference is for 24-hour locations, um, but those hours are determined by the municipalities that the stores are located in, mm -hmm. and they vary. Some are limited to 18 hours that aren't specified what 18 hours they are. Um, some are have hard limits like 12 to 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. It, it, it does vary, but again, of 90 Walmart stores, there are only 12 that are limited on hours. Uh, you don't you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Follow-up. Now, I was at your last neighborhood meeting you had, and those questions, same question was asked by some neighbors about 24 hours, and your statement was, uh, your statement was that it was only 24 hours because of the type of products that you have, personal goods. You were also asked, asked to go back and take a look at it and see if you could reduce dollars. So that came from some of the residents. So what we'd like to do for your next meeting is you go back and you look at that and you, and you need to, well, I think you need to address that issue if you can do it. If you can't, you tell them why. Also, the issue came up about the delivery of trucks. You, at that point in time, I know the hours was different. You stated that the trucks would come in one or two a day, and they would go there in the well. They would be in by two, and they would be unloaded by four. Now, this is what you told the residents at the meeting we were at the church. So what I'm asking from you and your team is you need to be consistent because I come to your meetings, and I do take notes, and I do come back. So we need to be transparent, above board, and let them know exactly what you plan on doing if you get this project, and not swept away. Okay, Mr. Chairman, if I can to that point. It, again, I, I, we're doing the best we can yeah, to give you a that. generic. This is kind of how a typical store goes. But again, our store managers have to work with the municipalities based on restrictions from municipality staff. So, and we also have to work in, like I said, our entire system. As you can imagine, with 4,000 stores, we have lots and lots of trucks rolling on. <laughs> Wonderful highway system here in our great country on a regular basis. <laughs> that is the typical window, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and we can get specific answers for what the store, how the store would operate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If not, I, I'm prepared to go on to the next item. If, if I can, I can't see the chair from here. I don't know if he can see me or not, but I would like to turn it. Okay, Mr. Uh, <laughs> if, if I could speak to your vagueness of answers. Uh, you said you could get answers to us to those questions, specific answers. Uh, I, I, really, I did not hear any specific answers about safety in the parking lot. Do you have any cameras in the parking lot? 
uh, and and I don't want to know what you're doing in Kalamazoo or Panama City, Florida or anywhere else. I want to know what you're doing or proposing to do here. And if you can't let us know that, then who do we need to talk to to find out? Mr. Chairman, this, this project does have security cameras as part of it. It's like no, in the in the parking lot, I said. In the, yes, in the in the parking lot. Yes, you would be specific, as I've heard you make this spiel and so forth. That's the first time you've said in the parking lot. But at all three of the meetings. Mr. Chairman, I've this site plan has surveillance cameras in the parking lot. What I and what the reason I'm being vague is I can't. We can only do what the municipalities we operate in allow us to do. We can't deputize associates to go out and start arresting. No, you can tell us what you're that proposing to do, and then no. we can tell you if it What we're work. proposing to do is operate this store like we operate the vast majority of our stores in the state that don't have those very specific requirements. And those stores operate 24 hours, and our asset protection team does everything that they can to protect our customers and our associates. That's not only our personal inventory and merchandise, that's our customers when they're inside the building and when they're outside the building. But it's disingenuous for me to stand here and say that in the middle of winter somebody slips and falls in our parking lot and we didn't have a security officer right there in front of that individual when they fell. I, I cannot stand here and in good conscience promise you that the unicorns will be corralled out front. It, it doesn't <laughs> work. That. That's not what I asked you, Bill. That's the specific <laughs> answer to your question. Yes, there are security cameras planned in the parking lot for the store. We do not have plans to have a private security company monitoring that parking lot 24 hours a day, or 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That is not the plan that we have presented. Okay, I catch while you're there, uh, you were talking about trucks uh, making deliveries, and then you said that there will also be the smaller trucks that will be making deliveries besides the large Walmart trucks. And where will they make the delivery to at the store? What location <coughs> at the store? Does this have two entrances, one for merchandising and one for grocery? Is that right? No. 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 no, 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 no just one. Uh, along, along the rear, uh, there is a, a roll-up door right here. And for all those smaller trucks, like the bread and everything, they make deliveries in that same area in the back, but they would use the man door instead of backing up because a lot of them are smaller box trucks and different things like that. But they will be contained in that same service kind of area that, that we've kind of surrounded with as much screening as, w as we can do to make it all function still. But they'll be contained in that same kind of area uh, at the back of the store. And so there, there will be trucks potentially stacked up or lined up in the back waiting to make deliveries on the case. Going in and out. You never Possibly. have that in any of your stores? Is it, you know, can you, can you just no, I, it, be straightforward it, with me? It's, it's, it's entirely a possibility that we could have the, the beer and wine distributor uh, delivering at our store and the, the Coke distributor left the Target store early and got to our store at the same time. That's I think it's possible. possible. Just say it. You, know, <coughs> it's entirely you possible. don't have to beat around the bush about it. Just be straightforward so, with it. And that it's entirely possible, which is, but as I said, it's located in the back. The reason I asked if there were two, there are occasions because of our stores, depending on if it's a brand new store or if the store has been expanded. There are some stores that have been expanded that do <coughs> have a separate merchandise entry point in the back of the store for those deliveries and a separate uh, food delivery location. If it's an old discount store that's been expanded to be a super center sometimes in order to accommodate that movement, they added additional storage for the expansion. So there are two <coughs> item points, and this one only had one. Okay. Yeah, there was talk a while ago about the garden center and how it would be uh, uh, a wrought iron fence or something. Uh, what 18 feet. Um, in the front part here, uh, I believe the height is 12 foot. There'll be. Uh, I believe it's CMU or brick or quick brick. I can't remember exactly, but there's there's decorative columns along that, and then a, a wrought iron fence along the front, and then here in the rear area <coughs> are high racks uh, where they can store bulk uh, mulch, dirt, things like that, just like they have at the Home Depot. Uh, 
I'm not familiar with that. I own Depot stores there. I'm trying to get a picture of how it's going to okay. store it. <laughs> Back in this area, there's racks that, that, that can stack up to about 18 foot tall. Uh, racks? Is that racks, what yes. Okay. And they, so they'll stack pallets of dirt, uh, mulch, stuff like that. Some stores around the country, they used to put that in the parking lot. This store, no. It will be contained in an area uh, here in the here uh, along behind the garden center, and we have added a ornamental fence to the full height at 20 foot to enclose that area completely uh, to control access to that and also to provide a better visual uh, appearance of that area. Okay, <coughs> the question that I was intending to ask, and I think you answered it just now, correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, is you won't be having any outside storage. It will all be enclosed. Yeah. Yes. 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 On this store, that is correct. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to know. Okay. Uh, for the time being, right. okay. <laughs> I just wanted to address just very briefly, I know that um, Cherry has to go on to something else, um, but from a safety perspective, to the commissioners, is the Meyer store a 24-hour location? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And does residential back into the Meyer store as well? No. no. Okay. Yes. Well, well, multi-family residential. That's what I thought. I thought it was multi-family yeah. residential. Yeah. I guess my... my, my personal perspective is for my job as an assistant prosecutor for Oakland County, um, from a safety perspective, having worked in the Southfield Court, for the Meyer store, the safety concerns that have come through within the last, I want to say one to two years, have been internal retail fraud. There haven't been any parking lot muggings or things of that nature from our perspective that we've prosecuted, I'll say that. Um, so I guess from a safety concern, I know that some of the residential concerns that the Walmart will be sitting in more of a residential area. But I guess if the rezoning is going to be B3, possibly, um, you're, you're running the risk of building multiple businesses on that location anyway, correct? Sure. So it could be a variety of businesses that exist there from high end to low end, attracting different demographic as well. So I guess the concerns will be there regardless if Walmart is there or if another business comes there. And I think we are looking at this in a vacuum instead of looking at it as a future land use. And the problem that we're creating is that looking at it in a vacuum, we're not taking into account the possibilities that still could exist in the future. My, I guess what I'm trying to say is instead of trying to blame Walmart and say that Walmart's going to create the issue, we need to look at this as a whole and say where do we see it? Is it happening at the Meyer store, which is a 24-hour location, while it sits on Telegraph and maybe a little different there, it still borders 12 miles. So I guess we need to not look at it in such a vacuum and maybe take into consideration that this area could potentially have seven or eight businesses which could potentially draw a bigger crowd. I don't know. I'm just saying for future land use. I know that Walmart is the, the business that's on the table right now, but that's one business versus seven businesses that could possibly exist. So I guess uh, the safety is what I wanted to address from my perspective, and then also looking at future land use if Walmart is, in fact, not the retail location that exists there. <coughs> talking about the recycling area here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this area is where Walmart, uh, like most retailers, you know, they have a lot of cardboard uh, and they recycle all the cardboard and Walmart also recycles some of the plastics and other things through their uh, sustainability initiatives. Uh, this area right here is where it all will be stored. Uh, there will be a wall enclosing it and a fence along the front. So that's the, the, that same door in the back, they'll take the palace out of the cardboard and put it right in there. And that's what that area is, is used for, to uh, contain it in one area uh, to wait for pickup uh, when you get a, enough cardboard to get taken away to the recycling center. So it's just all cardboard? Uh, cardboard, um, plastic. There's also an area where they will recycle uh, some food products. Uh, they have a, a recycling program for that that they've rolled out nationwide. And so just throwing that stuff to landfill, they, they recycle it through a composting and, and use the company to uh, collect all that instead of just... Uh, Putting it in with everything else. Mr. Chair, I mean, Commissioner, that's it's part of the corporate sustainability program, which is the goal is to create zero waste. We're not there yet, but that's what this is designed to do to help us and our suppliers create zero waste. Mr. Chair, as a follow up question, and I know the commissioners have brought this up before, and a resident actually emailed me with regard to the demolition of the existing St. Pete's Church. We have recommended.
recommended and encouraged that those buildings be recycled. We know that about 85% of the material could be recycled. And since we do have this sustainability, um, just no, no answer tonight, but we would, we would encourage that the demolition process include the opportunity to recycle any usable materials of the existing facility. I don't know if there's a copper business in it. I was told that that roof on the church is copper. So yep. Perhaps an opportunity for an enterprise. It's copper. In any event, we'll, we'll talk further about that. To the chair, I uh, have one question to ask that came in to me. Is there any proposal to do anything with sidewalks in that area? Yes. Uh, and I'll, I'll let Robert yes. I'll show you exactly what okay. That's a good question. And uh, that was brought up during the residential yep. meetings yep. as well. Uh, what we're going to be doing as part of this project is we're going to be completely uh, removing it. If you walk this section, uh, the sidewalk that's out there is in really, really bad condition. Uh, in addition, uh, we're going we're to be completely replacing that sidewalk, and I believe it's an eight-foot sidewalk we're looking at putting in there. So uh, it's all going to be brand new concrete, uh, concrete asphalt, but it's going to uh, be per city requirements, and as a matter of fact, we may even go above uh, some of the requirements there. In addition, we're going to be installing a five-foot sidewalk along the entire frontage of Southfield right. Road. Uh, and again, you can see it's set back far enough that in the future, whatever road improvements do go through here, that sidewalk would not be impacted. Thank you. And for the chair. Yeah. And we also, I'm sorry, we also do have a connection um, that we're showing on the south side of the proposed eight-foot wall, a walkway. Um, that would lead back to Guy Street as well, and that okay. would connect to the front of the store. For the residents? Yes, for the residential uh, uh, people as well, so they can walk to the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said to the chair to ask a question on that issue. Uh, on that sidewalk that's being proposed, I was walking that area this afternoon, and uh, there seems to be a chain link fence between the vacant property and the soon to be vacant property and the resident that, that uh, will be continue to live there. Is that chain link fence going to remain and you put a sidewalk? Uh, that, um, that fence would be removed in an eight foot wall. The same wall. Which side, is, which side of the wall is the fence? I, mean, the on the south, the I said on the south side. The, south, walk. On the, south the, walk, side. the walk would be on the funeral home side and the wall would be on the residential side. <coughs> So if you can see, the walkway would be here. No, I can't see. <laughs> the walkway would be on the south side. The wall would be on the north side, the residential side. Okay. So in other words, the, the pedestrians would be, um, you know, they would not be walking on residential property. They'd be walking on funeral home okay. property. Thank you. I was just going to make a comment for the chair that uh, we work closely with Walmart to make sure that there's go above and beyond on pedestrian access, that um, there's connectivity to the public sidewalk system, that the bike path is upgraded. We also have two smart bus stops, which was mentioned earlier, that would get the full bus shelters and, and connecting paths into the sidewalk system. And for our requirements, they are providing for bike parking. So all those pedestrian amenities have been addressed on the site front. If I could, um, Go to the next item. Okay. Thank you. Our um, our next item item is dealing with the proposed rezoning for um, ZR thirteen sixteen, the, the Southfield Funeral Home. Uh, there's a request to rezone the existing RA single family residential, which equates to approximately zero point five two acres. Uh, it includes the uh, two and a half residential lots north of Cash. Uh, a vacation of the public right away, which is 0 0.26 acres. And to rezone both of those parcels to be <coughs> vehicular parking for a total of 0 0.78 acres. And I'd like to just briefly go through the 12 tasks um, that we, we talk, talked about earlier. And the first and, again, most important task is, is the request for rezoning consistent with the uh, future land use uh, which designates the, the nice. site on the portion south of Cash yep. for local mixed use, and uh, which is designated primarily for business in nature, mixture of neighborhood commercial service and office with accessory multi-family uses. The future uh, land use map designate the subject site
satellite north of Cache is low density low density single family, which is designed for single family homes on lots 20,000 square feet or larger, permits complementary small scale institutional uses. So therefore, um, to be consistent, if this rezoning is to go forward, the master plan should be amended concurrent with any uh, consideration for rezoning for this, this small piece here. Uh, we look at compatibility with site issues, and there are no significant environmental features on site. I believe there is a, there's, a, there's a couple trees on the vacant home, um, the vacant house, but any trees that would be removed would have to be replaced. Uh, land suitability and compatibility uses. The subject parcels are designated for vehicular parking only, so therefore there will be no building on that site. And uh, again, we look at density of use. There is not going to be any density issues because it's designated for vehicular parking. There's no significant environmental features. Uh, nature of use. Well, the intent of the vehicular parking district is to provide a parking lot for passenger vehicles not exceeding a net weight of three tons, and all parking shall be for periods of less than 48 hours. The proposed parking lot is compatible with the existing funeral home to the south and will provide a transitional buffer to the residential property to the north. I highlighted some of the specific traffic impact recommendations and issues just dealing with Guy Street and 12 Mile. Also we look at aesthetics. Um, because of uh, the parking, uh, the zoning ordinance requires that unpierced masonry walls shall be provided in non-residential districts where adjacent to residential districts. Screening issues and landscaping will be discussed at the time of site plan, but has been indicated a substantial decorative wall will be located on the northern part of the property screening itself from uh, the existing residents to the north. There will also be a wall required along the western property line screening itself from residential to the east and substantial landscaping will be required. As with regards to infrastructure, all the infrastructure is in place to handle this proposed um, parking lot, stormwater management will be dealt with under underground storage, uh, maintenance of property values, this is consistent with the existing parking uh, at the funeral home. With regards to a reasonable return, we have talked about the depressed um, market for single-family residential in the area, and it's unlikely that in this, on these specific sites that new construction would, would be um, a new single-family in any anytime in the near future. Capacity of the infrastructure, it is sufficient to accommodate the uses of the bus and the zoning district, this is just parking. Community impact statement was not required because this is less than an acre. Uh, lawful land use, this is not applicable in this particular case. Will it provide a desirable zoning trend? Well, um, a, lot of, a lot of residents prefer, if they're going to have commercial or non-residential development, they'd rather have the buffer of a parking lot with adequate landscaping and screening. Uh, is it reasonable boundaries? Yes, it may be reasonable if appropriate screening and landscaping is installed as a buffer to adjacent residential uses. Uh, again, site plan issues which are done administratively will deal with all of the screening requirements, landscaping, pedestrian connectivity. And uh, we do have some recommendations with regard to that driveway that's exiting and entering onto Guy Street. And maybe for next week, um, you guys can review whether or not that driveway can be moved a little bit further north, <coughs> whether we can limit left turn only like, out, of, out of that driveway. Uh, we're going to make recommendations that signs are posted, no through traffic, even though that guy street kind of dead ends and you can't access. There's, there's some other traffic mitigation issues that we would deal with working with the city's traffic engineer. So again, just dealing specifically with the rezoning, if there's any uh, questions that the uh, commission may have, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Um, I think it makes sense for the rezoning and giving them uh, additional parking, you know, a little reparking for that to use. That makes sense. Um, you know, I don't know if you're entertaining any questions about the types of curbs that we're putting in. Well, we, we, we can have
have um, we can have them address that. I can tell you that um, we have been contacted by uh, some of the adjacent businesses that get overflow parking in their parking lot. We know that the residents have had issues with people parking on the street and walking. And so we, we believe by having this expansion and controlling the in and out, uh, this will alleviate a lot of the nuisance problems that could be. Uh, we do have, um, you know, the ability for traffic enforcement and to put traffic control mm -hmm. orders in place as we go through the process. But I, I know you had a specific question about curbing, and I'm going to direct that to you, Rob. You, curbing, on-site curbing? Uh, the curb islands that you have here, sure. you know, and <coughs> landscaping, if any, is going to be in those. Uh, yeah, you know, landscaping would be all around this area here and all along here. Oh, so it's all just painted. And, yeah, and all along here as well. Yeah, some of these are look, being look, or, or shown as painted. Um, you know, uh, some of those obviously, uh, and I think since this plan they've been somewhat rounded based on the uh, city's traffic engineering comments. Uh, we could certainly potentially look at adding some green space there, but uh, we, we do have a lot of green space throughout there. And with this funeral home, uh, when there are a lot of different cars, um, to try and keep some of this uh, area painted um, would, would allow just different maneuvering, uh, you know, instead of having stationary uh, landscaped islands in that area. Mr. Colfax? To the chair, I too agree with the rezoning for the parking. This is going to be almost a, a three-tier parking situation. <coughs> so you're going to have people using it parking from the church, and also you're going to have people using it that's quote-unquote going to uh, Kmart, to Walmart. <laughs> my, <laughs> my question is, and I think one of the uh, residents brought this up last time, if there's a large funeral overflow, I can't say overflow, a large funeral there, how is it going to be determined to block off those Box for the funeral, so the people in the visiting Walmart won't use it. Yet. Is that, is that going to be? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's, that's a good question, Commissioner. Wood. Basically, what we do is, when Mr. Young and, the, and, and their team no, realize, they they know in kind of in advance when they're going to have one of those really exorbitant, you know, the patriarch of the community type of that. Um, all, all that we've asked them to do is to give our store manager enough notice. Okay. Um, and that's that's part of the design with the overflow. Now, it it will be, I will tell you, it would be predicated on the funeral home and their staff to direct to that okay. assigned that parking. Is, is, their part, is, their, is their position to monitor and make sure they have enough space available for their funeral? Right. Okay. And, I, and, and we're happy to, like I said, provide, and it's, it, the way it's laid out, <coughs> the design would be, and, and to, to utilize those those spaces closest to the property. Okay. Uh, and again, on the on the pedestrian point that was that was addressed, the entrances to the store are all on the north face of the building. So, again, you know, is there a possibility that that somebody could pull into the that portion of the parking lot and walk immediately over to like the garden center? Yeah, it's probably there, but it, again, to, to access that, that you've got to come all the way around the front. It's designed to drive traffic towards the front of the store. Okay. We do not have uh, customer access points on the other three faces of the building. Okay. 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 We'll move on to the next item, and uh, Mr. Spence will. Uh, Handle this. GT 1247. Yeah, that's 1239. Uh, this is special use and site plan review request of Patrick Bell. Uh, Tim Donut US uh, Limited. Constructing new 1,953 gross square foot Tim Hortons restaurant and drive through. <coughs> property located 19701 West 12 Mile Road. Um, this particular location uh, is right adjacent to the existing uh, Evergreen Plaza Shopping Center. So we are just west of uh, uh, Evergreen Road uh, on 12 Mile Road. Actually, it's the site of the existing uh, Uptown Eatery. Uh, if you recall, this particular site 
Uh, there's been a Mr. B's in the past. Uh, actually, there's been a number of various different restaurants that basically is, have now made it or have been there for a very limited amount of time. Uh, what the petitioner is going to be doing here tonight, uh, he's going to be making a presentation to you. Uh, we have, uh, they're in the process of revising their site plan, uh, so I don't have specific site plans for you tonight. He at least wanted to provide you with a presentation on this project, then we will bring it back to you next week uh, with staff comments as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Patrick Bell with uh, Tim Hortons. Uh, as, as Mr. Spence said, uh, what we're proposing uh, is a new development, a new uh, Tim Hortons Cafe and Bake Shop. It's approximately 1,950 square feet. Uh, it will be uh, located where the current town eatery is. Uh, we will be a, uh, a tenant. We will be uh, executing a ground lease uh, with the current property owner uh, at this site. Uh, we're very excited about this location. Uh, this is one of our new uh, restaurants. Uh, about uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, we came out with the cafe and bake shop concept, which is really what Tim Hortons is in the United States. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've taken our, our coffee shop and really brought that to the forefront uh, and, and made it more of a cafe style uh, environment, much like you see in, in, in some of the competing businesses. Uh, we've also brought our, our baking out front, which we call presentation baking. So if you go into a, a new cafe and bake shop, Tim Hortons, uh, you'll be able to actually see them putting the, the finishing touches on uh, our products out front. Of course, we've got all the sneeze guards and all that to keep people uh, from contaminating food, but you can actually see uh, your uh, food product being made primarily in, in the bakery uh, 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 products that we have. Uh, this location uh, <coughs> is a very typical location for us. One of the great uh, uh, amenities uh, that we're looking at on the site is the outdoor patio. Uh, working with uh, our, uh, one of our partners, uh, Cold Stone Creamery, which we are the exclusive uh, licensed company to uh, sell the products in Michigan, uh, we, we started adding patios to our, our operations and they've been fantastic. And although this location will not have Cold Stone, Although we will not have Cold Stone at this uh, location, uh, we do have the Cold Stone Creamery. It will have uh, an outside patio if we can if we can fit it into the revisions uh, that we have from staff. Um, real quick, uh, we we did receive uh, the staff review letter last at the end of last week. We've taken a look at this. We don't feel that there are any items in here uh, that are really detrimental to this project at all. Uh, I think they're they're all good uh, good uh, comments that were made. Things that I think uh, between Tim Hortons and our landlord or our potential future landlord, uh, we can address on the site. And I just, uh, you know, if you had any questions for me, I'm more than willing to uh, address them tonight. If, if I may, through the chair, just uh, to follow up with some of those comments. Uh, again, staff has reviewed this. Uh, they do have the review letter and uh, in the process of making revisions to the plan. Um, the, the building itself, the requirement within the B2 uh, zoning district is 50 feet all the way around. The, the building doesn't meet that, so they meet their setback requirements. Uh, they meet their landscaping requirements. Underground detention proposed right in this area right here, so they will be doing a 100-year storm for their stormwater management on site. Uh, again, setback requirements met, uh, landscaping requirements met. Uh, the building itself, uh, do you have elevation of the building? Yeah, there? actually they're right underneath that. Good, we call it. Uh, it's going to be a mix of, of brick and ephus uh, and glass, so this is what the proposed building would look like. It, and if, if I may, uh, Jeff, yes, this, this is a, a upgrade from our, our standard building. While I do prefer our standard building because I, I, I think it's kind of set off from uh, most of our competitors, uh, this building does include the brick to, to uh, to uh, kind of comply with the, the request of, of the staff, and uh, I know that the community here is, is really interested in seeing a little more brick in, in their buildings. Are you doing 
do anything with the fencing on the east side because you have the faded wood fence in front and this this brick further down is coming apart. Mr. Chair, yes, uh, we we've actually uh, through the the comments from staff and obviously uh, me going out there and looking at it, uh, we are, are talking to the landlord about uh, what to do about that fence. Uh, it, it's in pretty poor shape, and uh, that will be something that will be addressed as part of the, the site plan. Now, one thing I did want to point out to everyone, so it, it's not a surprise uh, when we're back here next week. Uh, we are only taking a portion of this existing lot. Uh, this <coughs> our, basically, our lease uh, will probably stop in this area somewhere, our lease area. Uh, so this, this other portion of the property, uh, the landlord is, is reviewing options of what to do with that property now. Um, but it is something that definitely is part of the site plan uh, approval. You know, there were comments made about that. Uh, I think a majority of those items are going to be addressed by the landlord as we go forward. Okay. Since we haven't seen uh, the recommendation from the uh, planning commission, and you are only leasing this building, right? No, we, we will build this building. It will be a ground lease. So then what? We need to see something on your landscaping? Are we gonna? Are you gonna do some of the landscaping out there? Are we gonna see? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Th this will be. Th we are going to raise or demo the existing uptown eatery building, and we're going to build a new building. Yeah, that's what It'll be a new site plan, new landscaping. You know, asphalt will either be removed or be resurfaced, and, and it'll be a, a brand new location. Which you'll bring next week is a colored site plan, showing all your landscaping. <laughs>
Yeah, we do. We do have a band, uh, and again, these, these are somewhat generic uh, uh, elevations. We do have a metal band uh, that goes around here that typically, you know, advertises <laughs> some of the product that we sell. This is not allowed in the city of Southfield, so we'll either seek a variance for this because I think it looks really good, uh, or we will leave that off. <laughs>
again, it just, it just as you might have heard earlier today, the last thing we want to do is inconvenience our guests, uh, whether that be, you know, uh, truck deliveries or parking or traffic or anything like that. We're in a service business and, and we're here to service our guests. And when we inconvenience our guests, they're no longer our guests. And that is not good for our business. Uh, there are four current locations in Southfield now. Uh, Southfield is a huge community, a thriving community, and uh, a community that is very underserviced uh, by Tim Hortons. Uh, in comparison, uh, if you were to look at Michigan in general, uh, there's approximately 750 to 800 McDonald's in the state of Michigan. There's probably, I don't know the exact number today, we're opening them every day, uh, but 149, 150 Tim Hortons in the state of Michigan. Hey, the chair. What is your <coughs> each store is unique and different depending on traffic volumes. Yes. So typically, um, isn't it uh, like a two mile radius that you look at the like the demographics and office workers? Wh whatever that is, there is a radius that you typically um, businesses like you try to be in. And right. and I just want to remind everyone that we're roughly 36 square miles. So having four stores, even if you had a two mile radius, uh, it all depends on density, traffic volume, access, and so forth. So we are here um, not to dictate to the market and not to even recruit or promote. We're here to see if uh, when the market <coughs> comes to us, it, is, the, um, is the use permitted by right, first of all, and is, is the density, traffic, circulation, and all those things compatible with adjacent uses, and does it meet the requirements of a zoning ordinance? Now, we, we're not here to say we've got X number of this and Y number of that, and that's not our job here. That might be other um, responsibilities of other departments in the city to either recruit, attract, or retain businesses, <coughs> but we're here to see when the businesses do come here through the free market, whether or not they're reasonable and meet our zoning ordinance. Thank you. Um, just from a, as, as Terry said, looking at it from a planning, a planner standpoint, um, I think that this is a good use of that particular space. Number one. Um, number two, from a personal perspective, I am in favor of a Tim Hortons being there. I live at the Park Place at Town Center, where that Tim Hortons can be crowded ridiculously on any given day, and it actually causes traffic to be in the street. I actually saw that one day where the line was wrapped around the building because there wasn't enough of a stacking to in order to accommodate. So I think for residents, at least, if you know that this important is there, that will alleviate some of that traffic coming from residents. While there is an office building there, that does attract a little bit more, you know, a little bit more traffic, obviously. But I think it does not matter how many Tim Hortons that you have there. It's going to alleviate the issue at one because you build another one. I'm in favor for it. And I think from a planning standpoint, that makes a lot of sense to put it there. <coughs> Okay, we're going to... What about the problem with the high school? <coughs> I know like the dollar store has a problem with the high school traffic and then, you know, high school kids and that problem and they anticipated how they will address the uh, problem with the high school kids. I'm not sure they anticipate any problem with the high school kids. <laughs> we're, we're doing a flight plan right now. Um, they'll, they'll come back next week and um, we'll uh, get some of these unanswered questions resolved. Okay. okay. Item, just quickly, I know it's been a long night. Um, I handed out uh, uh, a sheet that uh, quantifies all of the pedestrian improvements that were done in the city center this district. So, um, <coughs> Uh, that's that's for the planning commission to review. And if you have any specific questions, you can contact my office or give me a call. But uh, we did make some good progress on installing new sidewalks for the sidewalks. Excuse me, can you keep it down a little bit? We're still in the meeting. We did make some good progress in installing the sidewalks where they didn't exist. We uh, we, we repaid. Uh, approximately 450 feet of asphalt bike safety path on the south side of Civic Center Drive. We had 232 linear feet of new 8 foot wide asphalt pathway at Lawrence Tech Athletic Field installed this year. We had seven new decorative crosswalks at Civic Center.
Center Drive, Central Park Boulevard, and Civic Center Drive, Northwestern Highway installed recently. We have two median extensions that uh, provide pedestrian safe harbors at Central Park Boulevard, and we upgraded numerous pedestrian crossing signals and ADA ramps within the district. With regards to specific pedestrian amenities, we've had um, four smart bus shelters installed in the district, and one of which will be installed any day now. Uh, we've had one solar panel bus shelter at Civic Plaza. We've had six new bike racks, courtesy of a grant from SMART. We had eight new decorative benches with backs and four decorative benches without backs. Uh, seven new decorative trash receptacles. And then we've had um, improvements at Gateways, partnering, um, partnering with Lawrence Tech, the Gateway Plaza and Landscaping, Eaton Court Gateway Landscaping, Open Commons, refaced their sign, the former Bendix sign, and incorporated the Southfield City Center logo. We've had two new Southfield City Center gateway flanks installed on the north and south ends of Evergreen Road. And we've had two new sets of banners, spring and fall, with new additional flags on Central Park Boulevard. So I know we talked about the vision earlier in the year, and this is some of the kind of the fruit of the labor that's been installed this past year. And it's always good to take stock in, in our successes and build upon that for next year. So I wanted to share that with the commission. Sounds good. Uh, I have uh, one other thing. Oh, uh, oh you finished here? I'm finished, yes. Thank you. This is my miscellaneous business. Uh, son of a check cashing store that opened up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>